so uh, it's really nice to follow such a positive talk actually there from David um, and a, a positive day generally I think so I'm I'm going to talk um, a little bit about um, the demo zones but in the context of consenting and the environmental evidence base um, and talk, I, I have the benefit here I guess of following a lot of speakers who have already touched upon some of these subjects um, so I'll talk about some of the things that you've heard about already but um, not dwell on things that you've already heard too much about. So just to summarise very quickly, for those of you who don't know, Natural Resources Wales has been in existence now for nearly three years. Um, we formed by merging the previous functions of the Countryside Council for Wales, who were the Nature Conservation Advisor in Wales, um, the Forestry Commission and the Environment Agency. Um, and in the context of marine energy, we have two key functions. So firstly, we are the statutory advisor in Wales, on environmental issues and um, impacts. And this is at a, a, a project level, so we work with project developers talking about EIA um, and um, impact issues, but also at a strategic planning level, so we work very closely with folks like the Crown Estate in their uh, leasing rounds. But also another key role within marine energy is that uh, Natural Resources Wales is also a regulator for marine energy. So. Uh, we are the regulator for issuing any required marine licences or European Protected Species licences. Um, and I have colleagues here today from the marine licensing side of Natural Resources Wales. Uh, so, as I say, I, I share, have the benefit here, really, of following a number of speakers who have already touched on uh, the experience of consenting so far and uh, the building of the evidence base, the environmental evidence base. And I think, you know, the, the main thing to say is that we've come a long way. You know, we've got, we've got a device in the water in Wales now. We've learned an awful lot from that. Um, and there's, there's an awful lot of initiatives and programmes kind of chugging away behind the scenes that are all working towards helping the consenting process for people like Davids and his colleagues at Mordlice. So we've got things like the, uh, the Offshore Renew Renewables Joint Industries Programme uh, for Ocean Energy, the Forward Look. That, that was a massive step forward for the sector, really, the... The, the industry to, to reach an agreed view across the UK on what the, the evidence priorities were. Um, and kind of aligning into that, we've got um, the US Annex 4 programme. I don't, I don't know if some of you may not be familiar with this, but this is quite a big programme in the US that the Department of Energy um, run, and that they've actually recently published what we call the State of the Science Report. Um, this is an annual report that's produced um, summarising really understanding on key environmental issues and, and consenting issues for for marine energy and Wales has got a big mention in this report you know this this is an international US report and Wales is mentioned several times in relation to to work that is going on in Wales at the moment so you know that's a great step forward for Wales um, in terms of um, evidence and availability of, of, um, of, of kind of learning and sharing experience there's, there's quite a lot of web portals and databases um, again, some have been mentioned today, so, that, so the Wave and Tidal Knowledge Network, that the, the Offshore Renewable Energy Catapult Service, and the, the TETHIS database, which is the kind of the, the dissemination side of the US Annex 4 programme, that really valuable sources of information. And then there's various conferences, fora and groups that bring everybody together. So there's the there's a sort of the biannual EMA Environmental Impact of Marine Renewables programme, that next one is going to be next year. Um, Marine Energy Pembrokeshire do a, a massive, um, massively um, positive job in terms of bringing everybody together and giving us the opportunity to share experience and share the evidence base. And then there's things like the Ocean Energy Forum. Um, and then there's various kind of workshops and focus projects. So last year in Wales we, had, um, we hosted a workshop in Cardiff that was funded by Welsh Government and Crown Estate to look at some of these kind of key consenting and evidence issues, specifically with the demonstration zones in, in mind. Um, and a lot of the recommendations that came out of that workshop in terms of things that need to happen to get devices in the water in these demo zones has all fed into the offshore renewable energy, uh, the offshore, the OGIP ocean energy forward look. So, so some of these things are starting to come together and we're all kind of moving in the right direction. Um, there's also various projects that are specifically looking at consenting processes and um, there's the, the RICOR project underway at the moment which again Wales is feeding into using our experience and our lessons learnt and feeding into the development of that process which uh, project which is um, <coughs> looking at developing a risk based approach for consenting of renewables um, and then finally there's various reviews um, that, that have been underway such as the, the MMO review of monitoring for offshore wind so 
there's a lot of consenting around, uh, a lot of jargon associated with the consenting world, um, huge number of different terms, risk-based approach, proportionate approach, deploy and monitor, adaptive management, demonstration versus commercial. The, these kind of terms trip off the tongue really easily, but actually defining what they mean in practice is a real challenge. And this, uh, this quote from Einstein, if you can't explain something simply, you don't understand it well enough, it's certainly not intended to insult anybody. I class myself in this um, category as well. That there's a, these terms are very easy to troll out and talk about, but actually, you know, there's very quite limited shared understanding of what some of these terms actually mean in practice. So I just want to spend really the next few minutes of my talk um, just talking about kind of what some of these terms might mean for us in Wales and some work that NRW and others in Wales have been involved in to try and define what's meant by some of these sort of jargony, buzzwordy terms. So starting with um, deploy and monitor and adaptive management, well, TEL are a prime example of, um, of what that means. Um, they've now deployed their device in... Um, in Ramsey Sound, their Delta Stream device, and I, I don't want to dwell too much on this because it's been covered quite a lot already, but, but Ramsey Sound is an important area for marine mammals. You know, their, their, their site is slap bang in the middle of a marine protected area for, um, for grey seal, and it's quite a heavily used area by harbour porpoise as well. So, but the flip side of that is what a great opportunity to find out what happens when marine mammals meet an operating device. Um, and, you know, getting back to what Carol was saying, you know, not getting stuck in this vicious circle of kind of not knowing what the impacts are, but not giving anyone the chance to find out. So we worked really, National Resources Wales worked really closely with Tidal Energy Limited to, to get that device in the water in a way that meant they could proceed with their, their testing of the technology, but in a way that... that prevents damage to mammal populations, which is the, the key thing here. You know, it's about conservation, not preservation of every individual. Um, you know, what we want is to prevent damage to mammal populations. So the consent that, that, that we worked on with TEL allowed for that. And I think, you know, that's a really good example, a, a practical, good, solid example of what we mean by a proportionate approach to dealing with uncertainty about risk, about impacts. Um, so moving on to a risk-based proportionate approach, um, Carol in her, her, her talk um, talked about um, the sort of the riskiness of projects for, in terms of collision risk for marine mammals. So something that Natural Resources Wales were quite keen to do was to start to develop guidance um, looking at well, what types of marine mammal data might actually usefully inform um, consent applications and environmental assessment processes. Um, because traditionally the, the kind of advice that um, has been given out to developers is you need to go and collect two years baseline data on marine mammals and kind of come back when you've done that and you know we'll look at how that, that data might be useful in the environmental impact assessment process. Um, you know one of the things that we've learned for example through the MMO review of monitoring work for offshore wind is that kind of data isn't always that useful in uh, reducing the risk and reducing uncertainty in consenting processes. So we really wanted to look at, is there a different way of doing things and kind of, you know, better, a better cost-benefit approach to, to gathering mammal um, data. So we did this piece of work, um, working with Carol and her colleagues at, at SMU Consulting, to look at um, developing criteria, really, to assess the, the riskiness of a project in terms of its likely impact on marine mammals. So um, looking at kind of key impacts the, the types of impact pathways that are going to drive the need for data collection. So they, they, they're going to be collision risk and disturbance, really. There's other ways that things can impact marine mammals, but they're the things that are going to drive data requirements to inform the assessment process. Um, so we looked at developing criteria for how you might kind of categorise the riskiness of a project according to those impact pathways um, that, that kind of build in the environmental sensitivity um, the, the kind of the technology type and how likely it is to result in that type of impact pathway and then the kind of the scale of the, the project. So that, 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 that assessment and the criteria that are detailed in, in this report which um, is available on our website or I can send it to anybody who's interested, that those types of criteria then help determine what type of data, if any, would be required to inform a consent application the, the idea really being that kind of low-risk projects may be, you know, there's, there's not so much need to go out and collect data on marine mammals to inform the impact assessment, whereas, you know, very high-risk projects might have a greater degree of um, data requirement. But really, kind of what, what we're wanting to move towards is um, 
kind of sharing the, sharing the responsibility for decision, really, between the regulator, the advisor, and, and the, the, the developer. You know, we could tell you to go and collect the perfect mammal data set, spend multiple millions of pounds on a survey, but actually that might not sort of provide the really useful information in terms of informing the um, impact assessment. So we want, we want to help um, inform kind of cost-benefit analysis decisions on what type of data would be really useful to collect. Um, and moving on from that, sort of illustrating something <coughs> about the evidence-based approach, um, Bangor University and Swansea University are both working in partnership with us to start to look at collecting some of that, some of the type of mammal data that might actually be more useful than just sort of bean counting whether animals are there or not. So looking at, you know, if animals are in these marine energy areas, what are they doing there? Um, you know, how, how are they using these areas? So, um, so Swansea University, Luca Borger, is doing some work to, to tag um, seals to actually work out where they are and what they're doing and how they're using these areas. And also looking at increasing really our understanding for... Um, the, the population dynamics of the grey seal population in Wales, which will help enormously in terms of understanding uh, within impact assessment processes what may or may not be a problem in terms of impacts on, on these um, species. Um, so th this work and some similar work that Bangor University are doing in the Anglesey demonstration zone will all help to improve our ability to kind of understand whether mammals are actually sensitive or vulnerable to impacts, um, and that will all feed directly into consenting decisions and we hope that the CCAMS 2 programme, which um, is at the moment awaiting funding decisions, is it will be a really good opportunity to fill some of the additional evidence gaps that have been identified in the audit before we look. And then very quickly, just to mention a project that we're working um, in partnership with Moralice on, is this idea of these Rochdale envelopes, which are used quite commonly in marine energy projects, just called Rochdale because it relates to a piece of case planning law uh, for a business park in Rochdale. So we're, we're trying to use the term project design envelope because Rochdale gets a bit, it's a bit sort of random for marine projects. But we're, we're working in partnership with Mordlice, um, the Sea Mammal Research Unit and Bangor University to, um, to look at developing principles really for developing a, a, a flexible project design envelope. So it will allow um, David and his colleagues to have a nice flexible consent for the demonstration zone to allow developers of different technology devices to come in and use the zone, um, but is defined well enough to get through the consenting process. Because one of the problems with these kind of flexible design approaches to, to de defining envelopes is it it's very, doesn't really give a kind of a, something tangible to go through the consenting process against which to assess impact. So we're, we're looking at exploring, using the demo zone as a case study for looking at whether you can explore principles, but I'm hoping that that will be rolled out and be of benefit to all of you. So to conclude very quickly, because I've run out of time, that we've made some really good progress in Wales. We've got some really good um, examples of collaborative working. We've got, I, I feel we've got a real shared desire to overcome some of these consenting and environmental um, challenges. Um, and as I said, we've got some really good collaborative work already, but there's a lot more opportunity to build on that. Thank you.